Hey guys, what's going on? Today I'm really excited. We're going to uh, finally get the last bits and pieces done to my RB25 uh, that I need doing before I can put it back together and drop it in my stage yard. So I am of course heading back to PLR to see my friend Aaron. He's gonna help me hone my cylinders, fit some new ARP rod bolts to my new RB26 rods, uh, resize those rods to suit my new crank with the correct clearance, and then also check and set the ring gap for my new set of piston rings. So let's go hop in the car, we'll go see Aaron, and um, I'll try and explain as much as I can along the way, but we are gonna be a little bit pressed for time uh, today. Uh, Aaron's trying to squeeze us in with, uh, with a bunch of other stuff going on, so I may not be able to kind of explain every single part of every single process like I have in the last few videos, but um, hang in there, we'll uh, yeah, explain what we can, and uh, yeah, we'll see how we go. Hey man, what's going on? Hey man, just making round holes like usual. Cool. By the feel of it, it should be a pretty good set to finish. Depends on how the ring was made and all that. It's a very precise piece of filling for fitting rod bolts. <laughs> <laughs> Just tap it in. There you go. There you go. It's 30 bolts. Hey? It's 30 bolts. I thought you said 30 bolts. I'm like, you can't count. That's clearly two. Because oh, they've designed it so it's flush with that so you don't hit the fucking rod on the block or anything. Ah. They're not flat so they're just a little bit awkward to put in. Hands help. <laughs> I do not have big hands, these are just small rods. <laughs> I've heard that before. <laughs> so we just chucked the ARP rod bolts in. So standard RB26 rods. Yeah, that's pretty good. 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 Just, you know, for a reliability upgrade. Just to be sure to be sure that they're not going to go anywhere. <laughs> Is that the factory recommended way to put them together? I don't think so, but it works. <laughs> but these aren't that tight. They're, they're just tight enough. Just, you know, lubing up the threads with a bit of ARP grease because we want the correct tension and consistent tension on the rod bolts. Life's <laughs> boring if you're dry. How come we're putting nuts on these now when there's supposed to be a crank in the middle of that? We've got to resize them. The different tension of the ARP distorts the shape of the rod tunnel, so they have to be resized. Ah. Strips them off the parting face and we've got to hone it on that machine back to spec and then check bearing clearance. Oh, so you're fully doing them up to torque? Yep. Right. We're setting the arc on these guides truing sleeves, so make sure the stone's nice and flat for resizing these rods. There's a stone that goes in and out on this side. Oh, yep. And these two guides here pivot oh, so okay. you get the shape right. Cool. Jesus. <laughs> you look at our fancy gauge we've got here. Each number on this is one thousandth of an inch. So each oh, line whoa. is one ten thousandth of an inch. Yeah, that's awesome. So I've got five our two ten thousandths to hone out of this rod to get it to bottom spec size. So how how big should it be? So I've set this zero is at the bottom spec size. Oh yep, okay, cool.
Oh wow, that took that much off already. Yeah, three thousandths of an inch. Cool. If you think about it, it's not very much. It all depends on how much pressure you use, the grit yep. of the stone, how fast it's going. Yep. I get all you. that stuff makes it change how long it takes. So I'm going to take all of them to one thousandths tight first, and then I'm going to take one to size and check it. This is number two. Almost there, half off. All right, so now they're all down to what, one? One thousandths of an inch under spec. Okay, and so now you're, you're gonna bring it down that last one thousandth. Yeah, I'm gonna bring it to the bottom size. Yeah, so. So these should all just need a, a quick hit, and they should be pretty close. But yeah. you've obviously gotta be careful you don't go over. So like I only took four tenths out then because I'm trying to be careful. Yeah. Keeping it nice and straight is important. Ooh, getting close. Gonna take it apart, put a bearing in it, check the clearance, see if we need to go bigger or if it's just right. That is so shiny. Just giving the back a quick rub off with the scotch brite and make sure there's nothing stuck in that light layer of coating they leave on there. Ooh. Oh wow, okay. It's not necessary, just make sure it's clean, but it's just something we like to do. If there's any little things or defects, they'll show up a lot easier if you've given them a quick rub on the scotch brite. all the oil from my hands. <laughs> <laughs> Alright, so there's one rod that's been honed out and now we've got the bearings in there and Aaron's going to do the nuts up to torque spec and then we're going to measure the size of that hole in there now with the bearing in there, is that right? Yeah, I'm going to compare its size to the size on the crankshaft. Yeah, to okay. get the clearance that we have at the moment. With some luck, it's going to be just right. Do we ever have luck? Sometimes. We don't really ever have luck. You had luck that you didn't have a catastrophic failure when you <laughs> thrust bearing one. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, when the uh, crank got polished by our crank grinder, he evened out the sizes on the crank conveniently. Cool. They all measured nice and even to each other within a tenth or two. Sweet. Alright, here we go. Moment of truth. Slightly tight. Well, that's good though, isn't it? Yeah. It's better to be tight at this point in time. So now I know I can just bring it out a little further and it'll be perfect. Cool. It's got one and eight at the moment. And what should it be? Two and two to two and a half. Oh, okay. Yep. So, so it's about half a half a thousand under. Yeah. Hey, I'm getting good at this. Yeah. So I'm just going to bring it out four tenths to aim for two and two, and if I go a tenth over or a tenth under, I know it's going to be pretty good. Sweet. So what are we doing? We're checking ring gap? Yeah. That's how much we want and it doesn't fit. We're gonna have to grind it. <laughs> Which is normal. They're not meant to be pre-gapped rings. They're meant yeah. to be ground to the desired gap. Now we're gonna find out how much they do have so we can know how much we need to grind off to get it right. We do have an electric one, but we don't need to take very much off, so right. it's better off just using this. Can you just see the difference between the top and second ring there? Second ring 
mainly controls the oil getting up past the rings. It's got a nice little sharp hook on it to scrape the oil back down the bore. Whereas the top ring has to take care of most of the compression. So, sorry, which is the top ring and which is the... This nice shiny one's your top ring. Yep. I've got them backwards. Yeah, this... Right. <laughs> That'll make more sense for you. Okay, yep. <laughs> top ring does all the compression work. Second ring stops too much oil getting back. It's got a nice sharp edge on it. Oh yeah, you know, I can see that now. Caveman tech. <laughs> well, that's a minimum clearance for the second ring and it fits. Cool. Right on, 22. Okay, so what? Most of them were 22? Yeah, which was our minimum second ring gap, and the others that weren't 22 were 23 down. So, Sweet. as I predicted, we don't have to grind the second ring. Nice. All right, so how did you go with the crank? So, before you got here, I'd already rechecked the main tunnels, rechecked the bearing clearance, and it was just right. Oh, cool. So the main tunnel wasn't as bad as we first measured it to be. We must have slightly over-tensioned it or set the gauge wrong that night when we were checking it. It was very late. Did you want the bad news or the bad news? <laughs> it's tight. That's not good. I don't know if it's tight because they did that to get the clearance right or if it's tight because of the damage because it's even the whole way across. Right, <laughs> cool. But yes, it's That's true. just right. We've got two and four, two and six thousand bearing clearance on the mains. Right where we want it for this nice little RB25. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, like you say little and, and you know I, I pretend to get offended but you look at this girdle this like it's a one piece main cap girdle kind of setup that the RVs have right and then you go and compare it to something like this like tell me tell me a little bit about this this is the the billet main cap thing right yeah so individual billet main caps with a billet girdle bolted down to the top of it like that that's serious yeah well, if you want your crank to stay put, you've got to have a nice bit of support network for your crankshaft. Yeah, that's crazy. <laughs> How much does something like this cost? I couldn't give you an exact number, but it's a couple of thousand just for the caps and girdle. Oh, God. Right, and then, and then, and then, and then machine to work the machine. to get it. <laughs> yeah, right. All right, so back to my small RV <laughs> with the weak little girdle. <laughs> Cool. I've only ever seen one of them break and it cracked on this number five out of that hole. Jeez. I was on an RB26. Oh, that sucks. And I think the guy said he made near 950 wheels, so. Oh, wow, okay. Yeah. I mean, at that point, you kind of. There's a fair bit of forces in the motor at that kind of power. <laughs> so it's not a surprise that he broke something, <laughs> considering it was unopened at the time. Really? Yeah. Okay, so that's basically everything done to the block. Everything's ready to start reassembling. We check the all the clearances. The crank's good. The main tunnel is good. It all checked out okay. We've got the new RB26 rods set up, hanging up over here, that Aaron has resized to fit my crank with the correct clearance. We've also gone through and I don't want to pull these all out, but set the ring gap for each of the set of rings for each cylinder. So they're all looking good now. I think the next video uh, may be starting to reassemble the bottom end for this engine. Uh, so make sure you stay tuned for that. And thank you once again, Aaron. I'll see no you worries. next time and catch you guys later. Not the first time we've had a handful of nuts, eh? Not normally this many at once, though.